What is going on guys, this is Miesin back at it with another tier list video, this time of course covering the top 30 best blowouts to use when you're going first, so if you are tired of having to use your brain in order to win, don't worry, I got you, so these cards are so insanely powerful that sometimes just flipping one of them can be enough to make your opponent rage quit, which of course is absolutely beautiful, right? <laughs> Anyways, before um, we go any further, make sure you smash the like and subscribe button. It really motivates me a lot to keep just breathing and existing overall because sometimes I feel like I'm about to die. And now let's proceed. Alright, so first things first is Shared Ride. I mean, it punishes your opponent for searching, which is like a basic, uh, like a mechanic of the game. So obviously, it's going to be in the A tier. It's basically max C, but instead of special summons, it's searching from deck to hand or grave to hand. It's also really good against Fire King even going second, because Ponyx and Barong are mandatory effects, so if they destroy them, you're basically getting two draws off of these two effects, and then potentially more draws because Sunlight Wolf might recycle something, and then they can still search with like the Ash or the Ponyx. You know, that's pretty nasty. Like, drawing five cards with Shared Ride can definitely happen like i said it's basically the max c but for uh, searching uh power filter dog shit not not right now i mean it's it will have its format one day I, i'm sure it's good against snake eyes for example it, it prevents monsters from being special summoned if they have a thousand or less attacks so yeah it is good against a few decks but it's a little too specific i mean i might like bump it up but maybe in the c tier zombie world on the other hand way too easy to out because of sp little knight so that is my issue Whereas Power Filter, at least you can prevent your opponent from being able to just out the card in the first place. Grave of the Su Super Ancient Organism is a little too specific. It's only really good against level 6 or higher special summon monsters, which is good against Despia and good against Kashtira, but I mean, that's no longer a deck. So that is the reason why downgraded to C tier. It used to be like probably a little higher. Uh, summon Limit is S tier for sure. If your deck can play it, then it's unfair. And next format is going to be abused because of Snake Eyes. They can always turn off their summon limit and... Uh, the uh, Silent Forcer can also play Summon Limit because they only need two summons. Uh, there can only be one, pretty good card, same thing with like Rival, Regals, and Magic, but I will be going over them in uh, in the near future, so very soon. Mistaken Arrest is basically like comparable to Shared Ride, the only difference is that it's way harder to play because Shared Ride, I mean like you don't have to like do anything to like hurt yourself. Mistaken Arrest on the other hand, it affects both players, so unless you're playing like Unchained or Dinomorphia, it's a real double-edged sword, so that's my issue. Triple Tactic Talent on the other hand, it's a good Good card going first but not insane it depends on the circumstances so if you're not getting handshot by like ash or jewel veil or nibiru then obviously it's dead if you're getting handshot by imperm you're screwed and if you're not getting handshot and you're getting hit by board breakers you're screwed or, or, or if you bricked and you can't even get a handshot you're also screwed so that is my issue and if you get shifted on standby not the best feeling but yeah still a decent card honestly but yeah going second it's like much 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 better much better a uh, spellbound going first eh, it's kind of mid it's not as good as d bearer so that's the reason why it's there summoning curse would most likely have to be uh here it's good in labyrinth and it's also insane against far king but even going second because they have to play on your turn they have to special summon a bunch of monsters so they're always banishing cards from their hand you might force them to banish their hand shops or their follow-up so i do like summoning uh summoning curse a lot and it's a mandatory effect so uh, if your opponent uh, searches a card, then this will trigger afterwards, and then will make the card that your opponent searched banish. So that's, yeah, that's kind of nasty. Alright, now, Deck Devastation Virus, we are in a handshop format, so obviously this card is pretty good. But unless your opponent uh, is playing like Math Mech and you're playing Labyrinth, this card will never really shine too much. I still believe that Eradicator Virus is much better. Solemn Judgment is obviously an insane one. It's one of the better uh, Floodgates to play. I mean, not even Floodgates, sorry. Just a really good generic trap card that you can play when you know for a fact that you're going first. Going second, it's not good. Solemn Strike, on the other hand, is good going second. But going first, it's a little less good. Uh, this card can take care of basically anything in the game except monster effects. That's pretty much the only thing it doesn't take care of. Yeah, it's a, it's a very good card. Clearly. Oh, I, actually, it doesn't negate spell and trap effects. That, that's that's another thing. Fenrir. Uh, going first, it's actually quite good. So I do like it. Different Dimension Ground is kind of cracked, but not a lot of decks can play it. So that's my issue. Otherwise, it would be much higher. And it only affects monsters. So if you're playing against like a runic deck, then you're screwed. <laughs> yeah, it's a, all the cards will just be going to the graveyard anyway. So yeah, it's not going to be doing jack shit. Necro Valley, it's, it should be much higher, but nobody can play Necro Valley because everybody is trying to interact with their grave. So that's the reason why it would be in C tier, just because it's so good that nobody can play it. So yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's interesting. But honestly, if your deck can't play Necro Valley, it should probably be in this section, honestly. It's it's a really nasty card. But again, it can be outed by SP, so it's like, eh, 
Yeah, it's it's not like it's it is exactly like Zombie World in a way where it's like it's somewhat easy to like out it if you just have like two bodies on the board. But at the same time, cards like these kind of cards they they might like punish your opponent before even getting to the uh, to the out or. I don't know, like preventing your opponent from getting to the out. So that's the reason why they're higher. Uh, Radicator Virus is like a really nasty one. Uh, but I, I think we're seeing less spell decks now. I mean, not not really less spell decks, but a more mid-range decks that can just play a lot of monsters that get you to the, uh, to the spell. So do you Eradicate on standby or draw phase or do you wait? Sometimes it's not really the correct move because then your opponent can like use spells and then surge them afterwards and it's just like it's it's awkward. So Radicator is weird, but like it's still really good. I would probably put put it here. I think this is like more accurate, honestly. Uh Mystique is very good, but it's very similar to Necro Valley, as in like nobody can play the card, so that's my issue. But I still think it should be like probably here. And Necro Valley should be here, most likely. Uh Goes and Match is like very comparable to uh There Can Only Be One. It's very good. Usually, I want to say it's a little better than Rivalry. It does depend, though. Never ending fun, fun, fun. I don't think this covers that much ground. It's really insane against Centurion and Pendulum decks, but, like, who's playing those decks? Oh, and Dragon Link, too. You cover Ravine, Boot Sector Launch, and, yeah, that's about it. Oh, I regained, actually. Yeah, it's it's a pretty good card. Yeah, but, I mean, like, uh, it's not searchable. It's a continuous job. You have to pay life points, and then time has been called, and then you lose. I don't know about that. Anti-spell, on the other hand, I think that's an easy one. Definitely has to be here. I think this order might be a little better. Uh, I mean, it's interchangeable, though. Like, this, like these two cards are, like, actual game-ending cards, but Solemn Judgment is, like, very easy to play. And it was Triple Tactic Thrust, much better than Talon going first, but especially post game one uh, because you can side in like floodgates so you're basically getting any of these cards below but just not these ones because these are uh quick play spells or continuous chop cards and this is a uh, counter chop card anyways dimensional barrier very insane card as well uh, i want to say that obviously better than fenrir fenrir should be like mm, maybe here like these cards at least punish your opponent for like even trying to stop so if you have like an already good hand then you win for for fact but fenrir doesn't really Punish your opponent too much. It just gets you like one extra inter interruption. So it's a little less overpowered than these cards, I want to say. Rivalry is clearly very good. But just to make things simple, I'm going to put it after goes and match. Because I do believe that they're all in the same league. They're still obviously very good. And they can be board breakers, depending on what deck you're facing. Obviously, thanks to uh, Simon, I uh, relatively, now, maybe not recently, but realized, but... Yeah, uh, there can be one even against Rika going second can break the board because they don't have like Omni Negates that can negate this. Regulus cannot negate there can be one, so yeah, you flip it and you win. Uh, same thing with Goes and Match in a way, but they do play a lot of water monsters, so it's not going to be like super insane. Dimension Shifter, let's see. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Obviously, S tier. Uh, this is one of those cards that even going first, like you can play it in like a, a deck that loses the Shifter. You shift your opponent and then you still win, but it's not like... um it. it if you do that, you have to make sure that you only sighted, uh, sighted in when you're going first, because then you're going to be un... Like, you will no longer be under shifter on your turn three, and then you can go for game. Whereas, if you're shiftering going second, your opponent will become unshiftered before you, and then he can kill you. So, sometimes shifter is actually better going first than going second. It, it really depends on the circumstances. Like, if you're playing shifter, for example, in Unchained or... Uh, mana dome then it's insane going first but going second maybe a little less good unless you can really capitalize off of it and you can kill your opponent that's basically what i'm trying to say anyway skill drain is that even like a side deck card at this point but i mean yeah that's that, that's a really no-brainer the card is extremely stupid if you have to side in like hand traps or uh, like board breakers that aren't back removal against your opponent decks like for example fire king uh, skill drain there's gonna be like no counter to it so yeah th this card is like super scary and nobody's playing like ghost ogre or a Book of Moon or stuff like that against Fire King, which are the cards that would outscale Drain because you can summon Espiel Knight and then Ogre yourself or summon like a rank 4 or something that destroys the skill Drain and then you Book of Moon yourself. Can't do it with SP though. Anyways, Magic Deflector, that card's really good. It's really good against um, Fire King as well. Anything that plays continuous spells and field spells, Magic Deflector kind of like comparable to Dimensional Barrier, but for spells... in. It, for every kind of spell except ritual spells and normal spells. Covers basically almost everything though. While Dimensional Barrier covers like extra decks. So yeah, that's the reason why Dimensional Barrier has to be better. Uh, but these cards are like super generic as well. And again, like thrust targets except for these two. Uh, Dimensional Fissure, it's a little too specific. So I'm going to have to put it here. Mass Change Second, very good. Very comparable to Dimensional Fissure, depending on the deck that you're playing. Like, you could play this in Phantom Knight, which is already very resilient going first. 
but it's going to give you that that extra ability to like make sure that your opponent absolutely cannot play whatsoever all right the next one is harpy's feather storm which is a very stupid card i mean there's no wonder the flunderies deck has two like i mean the, the Flunderies deck, honestly, is not even a Flunderies deck. It's basically Shifter with Featherstorm featuring Flunderies cards. There we go. That's the that's the more accurate uh, name for the deck. But yeah, it really just abuses, like, two of the most degenerate cards ever. And then the rest of the deck is dog shit, basically. Oh, uh, you got Robina. Whoa, insane, incredible. Um, and then the freaking Ryza is probably better than Empen. I mean, it depends sometimes. Yeah, obviously Featherstorm is insane if your deck can play it, aka Flunderies, and that's it. And finally, Destructive Daruma Karma Cannon is a very, very, very good card. I would feel stupid for putting Eradicator in B tier, honestly, when I think about it. So I think Eradicator should be here. Uh, but yeah, better than Fenrir. And Destructive Daruma Karma Cannon is probably the best card here. So I think this is probably as good as it gets for the tier list. So yeah, you guys let me know how much you agree or disagree with this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Peace.